hey guys once again welcome to our channel in today's video we are going to discuss a new concept that is criteria of purity obviously but before moving on to our new concept let's just recall what we have done in our previous video so we discussed about the different apparatuses that we use to measure time temperature and mass and volume so for measuring time we used a digital stopwatch which measures up to 0.01 seconds we also for your temperature we used a mercury in glass thermometer that measures up to nearest degree celsius for mass we use an electronic top balance that it measures up to 0.01 gram and for volume uh, we use four types of apparatuses the first one was beaker that we used to estimate the liquid volume then measuring cylinder that will measure up to 0.1 centimeter cubed it's more accurate than beaker and pipette it measures a fixed volume of liquids accurately that is 20 centimeter cubed and it measures up to 0.1 centimeter cubed and finally the burette which is used for measuring a variable volume of liquid accurately and it also measures up to 0.1 centimeter cubed all right now before we start discussing our criteria of purity we should be knowing exactly what are we going to discuss in today's video so let me just go to the syllabus all right so you here you can see clearly so what will be our main objective in today's lesson that will be demonstrating knowledge and understanding of paper chromatography we will also be able to interpret simple chromatograms and we will also be able to identify substances and assess their purity from their MP and BP information. And we are also going to interpret simple chromatograms using the, including the use of RF values. The rest of the concepts we are going to discuss in our next video. So without wasting any time, let us get started. So firstly, we'll discuss about paper chromatography. What is paper chromatography? Now, this is a technique used to separate substances that have different solubilities in a given solvent. Uh, example, we can take as different colored inks that have been mixed to make black ink. So we can use this technique to separate uh, the black ink into its different components, all right? So what is the procedure? How we do this? The question that comes into everyone's mind after hearing this word paper chromatography. All right. So what happens here? Firstly, a pencil line is drawn on the chromatography paper and spots of the sample are placed on it. Pencil is used for this as ink would run into the chromatogram along with the samples. The paper is then lowered into the solvent container, making sure that the pencil line is sits above the level of the solvent so the samples don't wash into the solvent container. Then what happens is the solvent travels up the paper by the capillary action. Now you guys might be wondering what is capillary action. It's a very difficult term. Also, you're not required to have a knowledge about it, but some knowledge is required uh, for your general information. So if anyone asks you, you should be having an answer. So we'll be discussing this in our next slide, uh, in our further slides, uh, taking some of the colored substances with it. Different soluble substances have different solubility, so will travel at different rates, causing the substances to spread apart those substances with higher solubility will travel further than the others. This will show the different components of the ink or dye. So let me just show you a diagram or to, sh to make you understand what exactly is happening. So here you can see a diagram here. So what's happening here? Let me just uh, make you understand it. All right. So paper chromatography. Now first step already you know already you know that we have to set up the chromatography paper as shown okay so we you can see here there are three different inks uh, there are three different reference materials and we have a black ink that is a substance to be tested all right and we have a chromatography paper where we have uh, also drawn line on a line drawn in pencil and we have placed our reference materials in this substance to be tested that is the black ink now what happens we lower this paper into a beaker with appropriate solvent. Wait for solvent travel of the paper. So you, you can see clearly in our next step um, that, that we have a beaker and we have placed the, chromatog uh, the, the chromatography paper in the beaker and 
our solvent make sure the level of the solvent is below the pencil line all right now we have to analyze the chromatogram now this black ink mixture has separated into three substances and we can compare it with reference materials all of this is a bit complicated so let me just uh, make you understand uh, properly now now paper chromatography you already know the separation technique that is used to separate and identify the component components of the mixture now how it works is fairly easy for is let's imagine you have an unknown liquid liquid a and you want to find out whether or not this liquid is impure all right you want to find out whether or not this liquid is impure example uh, so obviously talking about a mixture and if so how many substances are in this mixture and what exactly are they all right so let me just bring you to the first step here firstly you simply get a drop of liquid a and place it onto the chromatography paper you then draw a horizontal line marking that drop all right you will see why this is important later okay now here you can see and at the point two number two uh, step number two you can see here we are drawing a horizontal line and we have placed our sample and some reference materials what happens now the line we have drawn horizontally is called the origin line all right now you then set up the chromatography paper inside a beaker so that the bottom of the paper is just immersed inside the solvent it could be propanol or water all right so these two solvents you can use an example of this setup may look like this you can see here in the number two that we are creating this this could be in the, uh, so this is what your apparatus will look like you have um, put your chromatography paper in the beaker but your the level of solvent is below the pencil line all right now what happens here as the time passes the solvent will travel up the chromatography paper by the capillary action all right so capillary action we are going to discuss in our upcoming slides as the solvent moves up the sample spot of liquid a in this case the black liquid will dissolve in the solvent now what will happen if liquid a was a mixture the question comes if liquid a was a mixture what will happen the various substances inside the mixture will begin to separate because they have different solubilities some substances will travel up the paper slower than the others and reach a different end point the end result may look like this as you can see in the step number three this end result will look like this that black ink that your black ink or the liquid a has separated into three substances all right this, uh, so this means it was an impurity it was a mixture all right now what happens in this particular example it is clear that the ink spot liquid a is a mixture i told you already why the reason i told you because you can see that it has separated out into three different components you can see that they are red yellow and blue in this case if liquid a was pure then you would only see one component all right if liquid a was a pure you won't see any different uh, colors or different components you will see would see only that particular component traveling of the paper and you will see only one spot all right now sometimes what happens some uh, in some cases the liquids are colorless the substance to be tested is colorless so how you can just determine that so what happens if liquid a is colorless then the process can be carried out exactly as before but a locating agent would be required to locate all the separated spots later in order to measure the rf values all right so finally since we know that liquid a is a mixture we can actually determine what each of the substances are exactly to do so we need to calculate the rf value of each of the separate co separated components on the chromatogram so what well, we'll be using a formula but that formula i'll be going to discuss in our next video okay all right we are not done yet so we have some more things to discuss as i promised you that we will be discussing about the capillary action uh, before that let me just give you some important points here if you're interpreting, interpreting sim simple chromatograms now if two or more substances are the same they'll produce identical chromatograms if a substance is a mixture it will separate on the paper to show all the different components and separate spots as we discussed in our previous slide i showed you the diagram it was a mixture it separated into different components an impure substance will show up with more than one spot and a pure substance should only show up with one spot 
and you can see in our you uh, did you see in your previous uh, slide that the black ink that substance that we were testing separated into different components it showed up more than one spot all right so it was a mixture all right now moving on capillary action now this is not required for you guys to have a knowledge of as i told you before but you should be having some basic information about that all right so what is capillary reaction now it is defined as the movement of water within the spaces of a porous material due to the forces of addition cohesion and surface tension so this is the basic thing basic info you need to have about capillary reaction all right not that much well, now moving on though the this is an example for all of you guys now what happens we often we student often gets confused between the term paper chromatography and chromatograms and i was one of those students when i was giving my gcs exam so i don't want you to just confuse with those two terms and lose lose your couple of marks all right so let me just clear that concept here now paper chromatography and chromatogram are two separate terms now what is paper chromatography is the name given to the overall separation technique all right is the name of the technique all right and a chromatogram is the name given to the visual output of a chromatography run what you see when you're analyzing your chromatograms let me just show you here the third one now till uh, from first step to the second step we are doing that technique we're performing that technique but in the third step we are interpreting we are analyzing that chromatogram we are giving we are being uh, like the first and the second step are the input to the step, input to the process and the third step is the output to that process all right so chromatogram is the visual output of a chromatography run this is the piece of the chromatography paper with visibly separated components of the after the run has finished all right so paper chromatography is the input and chromatogram is the output basically all right now assessing purity our last concept of this uh, last concept now uh, so what is meant by what we when we are assessing purity so basically what exactly we are doing all right so we are going to discuss that now now pure substances melt and boil at specific and sharp temperatures example water has a boiling point of 100 degrees celsius and a melting point of zero degrees celsius now mixtures have a range of melting and boiling points as they consist of different substances that melt or boil at different temperatures so these two are the properties of mixtures and pure substances that differentiate them all right so this is the main um, you should have a knowledge about this you should be uh, looking at this point when they were, whenever they ask you in your examinations that how will you differentiate pure substances and mixtures now moving on melting and boiling points data can be there for you to distinguish pure substances from mixtures an unknown pure substance can be identified by experimentally determining its bp and mp comparing it to data tables mixtures melt over a range of temperatures as they contain two or more substances this, this information you should have an idea of whenever it comes in your exam all right now we are going to discuss assessing purity in more detail so we should have an idea of that now the purity of a substance what is the purity of a substance now purity of a substance is defined as the degree to which a substance is undiluted or unmixed with other material a pure substance is therefore would be made of a single substance as we discussed in our chromatography experiment now what will, what is happening now we, now we are going to assess purity from their melting and boiling points all right now the melting and the melting point of a substance is the temperature in which the substance melts it's obvious similarly the boiling point of a substance is the temperature at which it boils this is a common it's not a very difficult thing to answer all right so we need to just have an idea of what are these two terms known as what is the definition of these two terms interestingly the boiling point and melting point of a substance can give us an indication of how pure it is now let me just tell you some tests all right not required that much but you should have an idea of these tests all right um now melting point of a solid now pure substance have a sharp melting point this means they have only one melting point they melt at only one temperature they can't melt at different temperatures 
for example water it has a melting point of zero degrees celsius you can't melt water at, at the temperatures for example you can't melt it at minus six degrees or minus nine degrees something it has a fixed melting point sharp melting point and for impure substance now we are talking only about solids okay so it uh, impure substances melts over a temperature range different ranges of temperatures it can melt any at any temperatures for example uh, not any temperatures it can melt over a range of temperatures and at lower temperature than the pure solid all right so it require it uh, melts at a lower temperature than the pure solid now boiling point of a liquid the condition is that if the impurity is a dissolved solid all right if the impurity is a dissolved solid now considering the cases of pure substance it is sharp all the liquid boils at the same temp same temperature but when we are talking about impure substances it boils over a range of temperatures and at higher temperature than the pure liquid now talking about boiling point of a liquid the condition is that if the impurity is another liquid it's not a dissolved liquid all right so considering the cases of pure substance the sh it is sharp and all the liquid boils at the same temperature whereas for impure substances it boils over a temperature range what happens here it starts to boil at the boiling point of one liquid and rises to the boiling point of the another basically this is the um, important thing you need to have an idea of just general knowledge you should have you should just have the idea of the how it works for the pure substances and how it works for the impure substances not that uh, not in detail all right so this was the end of our uh, concept and we discussed today very important concepts i hope that it was very helpful for you so in our next video we are going, we'll be going to discuss the further concepts of our um, criteria of purity where we are going to learn about the locating agents what are the locating agents we are also going to learn about the rf values the formula for calculating the rf values and etc so don't forget to hit the like button share with your friends hit the subscribe button comment down below so by that um, so by your comments i can just improve my content all right goodbye and take care and stay tuned for my other videos thank you